Okay, welcome everybody to the weekly charting analysis with myself, Jasper Lawler. Starting at the same time but different time zone, we're in Greenwich Mean Time now, 12.15, no longer British summer time. Got the risk warning on the screen here. Certainly plenty of events happening this week economically, namely central banks, which are obviously the driving force in markets these days. And then next week we've got the US presidential election, so a couple of interesting weeks lined up. If you haven't done so already, I certainly recommend having a look at our US elections page on the website. It's right there when you first go on to CMC Markets, uh, the UK edition at least. Last time I checked, 73% of CMC Markets clients think Clinton's in for the win. That that was before this latest email saga that rolled US markets on Friday. But I don't imagine it's changed too much since then. So here we go. And here, there is said move in the uh, in the Dow Jones you can see there was quite a sharp reaction on Friday afternoon you know is the cutoff here on um, Friday you can see that the Dow Jones went from being up here at well let me pull up the charts here's a daily chart but if we look at the one hourly you can see there there she blows um, took out lows of the day anyone with their stops down there Unfortunately, they were blown out, using as a, used as a buying opportunity to take the market right back up again. And uh, futures, for the most part, pretty strongly back higher, pretty much taking back all those losses. Um, at the end of the day, no one's going to know the result of these uh, this latest probe for weeks, if not months. Um, so there's nothing, no real evidence there to to derail Hillary Clinton. It would just purely be um, the fact that uh, you know this uh, this email scandal is kind of unresolved, and you know issues over her trustworthiness have helped Trump gain back a bit in the in the in the in the polls. But you know all that politics aside, I think you can easily determine that um, this reaction in the market here tells us that should should there be a Trump presidency, the the reaction in U.S. stocks would almost definitely be negative. Um, And again, if, there, if you did want a bit more of a read-up on, on the possibilities, uh, there's a number of articles going up, being updated on the, uh, the US elections page from the website. Um, I'll stick with the US 30 chart since we're on it. Obviously, we do have the Fed this week. Um, and the fact that the Fed are poised to raise rates you know, is certainly going some way to explain you know, why the markets are struggling to, to break higher into new new record highs um, and so we're obviously on the last day of the month here for October and the US 30 as we trade it is set for its third monthly decline um, if I zoom in a bit here uh, sorry uh, fourth and uh, yeah you can see that um, they've not been in terms of the body of the candlestick we had a bit of a bit of a shaky one in uh, in August but closed right back up off the lows Sim similar situation where it was a down month again in September um, but we closed well off the lows and here it's looking even less certain and you know when you go into the shorter time frames um, you see that very tight range that we've been in and this is it symbolized on the monthly chart pretty much just no you know no price action there um, almost no body to the candle on the monthly candlestick um, and you can see, always good to kind of zoom out to the monthly time frame, you know, this is kind of, you know, we dropped through that previous record, but then we dropped down to these old highs, and that's what's holding us up at the moment, so, you know, still, the market, I would say, generally in sort of bullish condition, but obviously pulling back from those highs, and I think that's understandable, you know, the, um, the, um, you know, uh, the Donald getting in would be a bit of a shake-up, and um, it would certainly create some uncertainty I and mean, it'd, it'd be a reason for uncertain markets to unravel 
that said, I think there's been some signs of confidence to buy up close to these lows. If you look at these these long wicks on these candlesticks on the US 30, just circled a few examples here, seems to be a bit more evidence being, of being bought up from the downside than there does evidence. Uh, you know, here's the, the one obvious one from the top side, um, but less wicks on these upper candlesticks, um, which is just one indication to look at to suggest that maybe we're in for a um, a break higher from this range eventually. And we've got this down sloping trend line, which is pretty well defined now, so certainly can expect some false breaks above it. But I think once we get a conclusive break above it, you know that will be when we probably switch gears um, towards maybe looking to to buy on dips to take us back to the the top of the range again, um, back up to the record highs. But obviously we're not there yet. Um, that's just something we, we we're looking out for. Um, but obviously, should we get a break through the bottom of this range, we've got this long-term support. Uh, but down there, through through that uh, 18,000 mark, you know, a bit below a bit below it, uh, where we've had these recent lows, probably opens up a fairly sharp decline because that would, it, you know, this has been our sort of tightening market conditions. So the markets are like a coiled spring right now, compressed, 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 and eventually we're going to get the breakout now. These would indicate a break to the top side, uh, but obviously, you know, the the U.S. election, um, the words from the Fed this week, going to going to play a large part in which direction that actually ends up being. If it is to the downside, I don't think there would be too much trouble to get down to this 61.8 percent retracement. Um, if, you know, if you judge on the kind of the the maximum width of this this price range, which if you drew the line from, over, you know, there is, you know, I tend to be a bit more conservative in terms of pro projecting. Uh, patterns, particularly in the stock market, which has a generally bullish bias, um, you know, if you could take that width of the pattern there and project that down, you know, I think that would easily carry us down to the 78.6. Or you can be a bit more conservative, maybe just use this latest width, maybe from here, and that would probably carry us into somewhere in the middle. Now, obviously, it's it's you know it's always significant when there's the Fed meeting, and I think that will probably um, keep a lid on on movements in uh, U.S. stocks and probably the dollar for for most of this week up until Wednesday when that decision takes place. Uh, but that said, it, you know it's the U.S. election next week. There's all I mean the market's pricing about a 17% chance of a hike. I would suggest that that really should be zero because there's no way the Fed's going to interfere interfere in a, the political process. We just saw the the kind of violent political reaction to the um the the FBI chief for, you know, daring to actually uh you know, say that there are some new uh investigations being opened, um, being called political, being told to resign. Um so, you know, why would the why would the Fed risk that when they could just wait another month? Now, if I switch gears to the the UK, obviously we've got the Bank of England this week as well, and equally central, the central bank here getting caught up in um, in, in politics as well. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the Bank of England forecast catastrophe if we um, if we exited the European Union. Um, that could still happen, obviously, but it hasn't yet. And uh, you know all the evidence points to their cut in interest rates being much too hasty, uh, probably wasn't deserved at all. Some s some modest signs that inflation's picking up. Probably, if anything, uh, they should be going in the other direction. <coughs> um, you know that's that's a, a that's an opinion, but it's quite a widely held opinion now. So you know the central bank just because it's independent doesn't. Doesn't make it doesn't make it immune from, from criticism when a decision does seem to be quite clearly wrong. <coughs> so we're going to hear this week whether Mark Carney is staying. It looks like he is going to do the remainder of his term as governor of the the Bank of England. Um, so he'll be at the helm for another three years, if that's the case, or almost three years, and um, should carry us through well into the. Article 50 type negotiations. Um, so should there be a bit of an economic storm later on, you know he'll still be at the helm. Um, 
what does all that mean for uh, for the policy this week? Um, we're, we're probably not going to see. You know, I think there had been some there had been some 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 rhetoric by Bank of England members to suggest that uh, that we were on for a possible rate cut this month. Uh, um, but uh, but the economic data just doesn't justify it. And given that they're they're already facing a fair bit of criticism for getting their economic forecast quite clearly wrong, possibly taking the wrong monetary policy decision by cutting interest rates the first time, you know, are they really going to double down on that criticism and and um, <coughs> and, uh, and then go and cut rates again? So again, it's you know these central banks are independent; they're not supposed to be influenced by political forces, but you know naturally. It's something that they have to consider. So again, um, you know, the Bank of England cutting interest rates has been a real tailwind for the FTSE. So again, we looked at the three months of the um, uh, U.S. stock market declining. You know, we're looking at our what are we on the fifth month in a row? I believe I said, yep, in the report, um, in terms of uh, a positive finish for for U.K. stocks. You know, obviously that's been largely helped by the the drop in the pound, which boosts the earnings of the multinationals in the in the FTSE 100. Um, you know, if you if you'd sold at the resistance of the old high, you know, well done because you know we're looking like closing in the bottom half of the monthly candle. You know, the index taking finding some understandable resistance here around that 7130, the the record high. And uh, yes, it's it's much the similar sort of reasons. It's you know that we don't quite know where the Bank of England's going to go in policy. You know, they had hinted at much easier policy. Maybe they're not going to now, given the, the politics and, and the, the more resilient economy than they expected. And the the US election, you know, that's a global phenomenon. And, um, <coughs> you know, certainly would, you know, if we if US stocks suddenly have a crisis of confidence, you know, you can expect the same thing to happen in the UK. And I, and I wrote about much the same thing, again, on the on the US election page in terms of the implication of the election on UK stocks. Mm. Now down into the shorter time frame, um, you know, there isn't too much change from, from last time we spoke. Um, you know, what I, what I was first eyeing was the fact that we broke down through this low. So we broke down through the low and then looking for a retracement level for us to go lower. Now that we have had that. Um, you know, you did well if you were looking, basically going off the 61, is that, am I right in saying? I've taken it off now. The 61.8, if you're waiting for the 78.6, unfortunately you missed out. Um, so we, we took out the low, wait for the retracement to the 61.8, gave us three different opportunities, well, one, two, three, four opportunities to sell down to the lows again. And we've got a little nibble below, uh, but largely we've kind of bounced back from there. And so now, Arguably, similar sort of process happening again, where we're looking for some sort of pullback from this decline. Um, so we've already hit the 61.8. That stalled us again. Um, you know, you've missed out on this initial decline, which took us back down to the lows just um, just on Friday. Um, but if you know you want another opportunity, then obviously keep an eye on how the market reacts at this 78.6. And again, back at that that old high again. Mm. Uh, that's with an eye to the market heading lower. Um, but you know, it's not necessarily the case. Um, it's you know, overall. You know, I think you know if we if we chuck a couple of moving averages on here, we'd probably say that we you know we're just pulled into a consolidation. Um, but overall, maybe looking at a sort of a, a weekly chart. You know, we'd so we you know we'd confidently say on looking at this chart that it's it's still bullish. So you know, don't get too sidelined about the fact that we're kind of tracking lower a bit on this uh, shorter time frame chart. You know, that overall the the bias seems to be good, but obviously uh, we have to bear in mind the fact we've hit a massive resistance level. Um, so signs of us edging down here, but again, um, that that uh, that previous high here holding us up quite well. We haven't closed below it for the week yet. And again, just to sort of um, uh, reiterate that, you know, just using this this rally up from these lows here, we bounced quite nicely off this 61.8. If we are going to edge lower again, 
after this little retracement or even if we get a bounce to the 78.6 which I had around here and roll over again you know possibly this 78.6 which is 6846 six, quite close to the 6850 round number and then obviously we've got these swing lows down here should the market roll over a bit further but these you know in the context of that quite large upswing in the weekly charts could provide some sort of opportunity should we get lowered from there you know if this is as low as we get then you know obviously we you know if, if you get more opportunities down here if you're more confident that this is going to cause the end of the retracement you know look for another dip down to these lows uh, but there's not quite enough evidence for that yet I would say you know look at this strong move higher wasn't really able to take out these old highs particularly um, so it looks like there hasn't been quite the the kind of strong candlestick that you'd want to see to the upside to tell us that this consol downshift consolidation is over. Now I spent a fair bit of time on these two indices just because they do have the central banks and obviously it kind of covers the the whole gambit in terms of the the US election. But I'll try and sp speed things along a bit for the um, the Germany 30. Here actually uh, quite interesting in terms of RSI because so I had pointed to this um, RSI trendline break before um, suggesting that could help us to the top side. Now the market continued up to the the resistance uh, but pulled back here from the top of the range. Now it's actually bounced off this rising trend line on the price chart also off this um, fourth touch on this RSI price trend line as well. So couple of reasons to think that this market could push higher out of the 10800 mark and um, you know we're gonna have a look in a minute but uh, the we've seen quite a sharp drop in the in the euro so um, if that's able to sustain itself then you know that's that's a tailwind for Germany 30 just like a drop in the pound is a tailwind for uh, the UK 100 maybe in terms of currencies maybe I should go straight for well I did just mention the euro so let's have a look at that first but I will also have a look at uh, dollar yen because obviously we've got the BOJ this week as well this is a daily chart for the euro just a couple of moving averages on here just to highlight the fact that we were in this uh, you know just in terms of differentiating the kind of trading environment we're in we were in a sideways range here um, arguably a bit of a kind of more like a triangle I suppose something along those lines um, triangle but we've broken down through the bottom of the triangle um, and these moving averages have, have been widening out as well so even though we've pushed it back above here you know the fact that this uh, 20 day is below the 50 gives us a, a, a slight uh, bearish bias to the euro um, but again looking uh, bearing in mind the fact that we're, we're heading down to this potential support down here near the the 10820 mark and then a confluence right in at 108 so we've had a bit of buying ahead of that um, but the fact these two out moving averages are lined up would suggest to me that we're probably going to try and go into there and test it again this little, again on the RSI we've seen uh, we're, we're now finding some resistance at the old support in around the sort of 45 mark on RSI um, on the daily chart so a couple of indications there that the the market starting to find resistance of course 110 big the big round number is here as well here so um, if you are if you were able to sell in at 110 you know well done because there was a confluence of reasons to think the market could head lower from here so again you know I guess the markets through uh, the the, the do dolly um, the euro dollars below 110 but obviously there's a lot of support now around 108 so I think it's probably that 108 109 and 108 where um, the 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 DAX or the Germany 30 as we trade it would really start to pick up momentum again yeah all else all else all other factors remaining the same um, you know that weaker euro is would be positive for the Germany 30 
Now we'll just jump to, to dollar yen because again we do have the, the Bank of Japan this week and the developments in the in the dollar yen are um, working out you know quite well at the moment. So we had this fairly classic looking triangle pattern. We got the nice breakout. We found the resistance at the old high. We've dipped back from there. Um, you know, I was talking about in last week's webinar that you know either the market holds on to these lows or it goes for a much deeper retracement um, down to a 61.8 or 70 or 78.6 percent retracement down here. Um, obviously, it was the former that happened. And if we zoom down to this lower time frame, you can see we've had a nice rising trend line here. And uh, if any, any, anyone was you know buying on a breakout and got worried by this candlestick, you know just keep in mind the overall circumstance here that we basically this was the resistance we broke above it and we've come back down right towards that just about that resistance area and this rising trend line um, and obviously the moving averages here kind of lining up both on the short and the the longer term so the market has about has been bouncing uh, and I would in, you know contingent on what does happen with the Fed which I think would probably be a much of a non-event um, and the Bank of Japan you know, I think this this dollar yen can can keep can keep trading higher because at the end of the day we're expecting a rate hike from the Fed, uh, but we're expecting the Bank of Japan, while not necessarily going to do um, much more easing. You know, they're still fully in there. Um, you know, they're still doing QE. You know, so um, clearly a big divergence in policy there. So I'll switch gears to well, that's okay. Can't forget sterling. Um, sterling bit very much in a range. I think you have to keep it on the kind of shorter time frames here because it's um, you know it's hard to hard to really see what's happening on the daily chart. But you can see these um, if you have just been you know not worrying too much that another flash crash is on the way. We had a little mini episode last week. Um, but we just we ended up finding support pretty perfectly at the 121 mark and then you know that carried us back up to what had been a nice kind of pivot area in around the uh, 122.50 dropped that back from there down to the kind of the previous um, and you know up to here again so this is classic range bound trading market behaving I would say I would say quite quite functionally um, you know, if you've been buying or selling any of these um, more clear support and resistance pivots, um, you've been doing okay in this market. Um, and until we get a determined break below 121, and then really 120 being the big line in the sand, um, you know, we're, we're range bound in, in the pound. In the light, in the light of the flash crash, it, it's hard to see there's going to be a huge amount of confidence to to buy the pound up. You know, you could argue it's the uh, the final flurry of the of the bear market in the pound, um, but I'm not necessarily sure that's that's the case. It's it's become a bit of political currency at the moment, the pound, and um, you know all this um, hype around uh, the future of the Bank of England governor is 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 testimony to that. So we'll jump over to to crude now. <coughs> bit of confidence coming out of the market that. Um, that this OPEC deal is going to hold together and so we're basically putting quite a nice little double top here at the major resistance level so you know we had this line in our chart for a long time obviously we saw it get rejected once we came down to the lows saw it rejected a second time with this trend line in here so even if you weren't confident enough to go against the the likelihood of an OPEC cut up at the highs you know you had more opportunities on the breakdown here but again, it's a circumstance where the, the the moving averages point to still generally bullish conditions, and so some confidence coming out of the market that, that some sort of c cut can happen. And you know, if they you know if they do completely abandon the the cut at the meeting in November, then you, we probably can expect substantially lower prices. Um, but that's not my expectation. I think something will pull together in the end. And uh, we've got some fairly substantial support around 48.20, which is the 61.8 of this big move up here, and it lines up nicely with this this previous peak 
from December uh, September 23rd so sh uh, and the, and the rising trend line so kind of three three potential areas of support confluencing uh, in in this area uh, may not we may not even get to that because we've got 49 uh, the 50 day moving average right on 49 so maybe that would be enough to to hold us up Gold is, um, you know, gold had a big decline and actually did surprisingly well to hold off of 12.50 support. Um, what I did was, um, and I and I did, haven't just done this now. You know, whoever attended the previous webinar can <laughs> can testify the fact that I've had this fib on for a while. I just drew a fib from where the market crashed. Um, which was, you know, this peak here, uh, just at the, at the beginning of this candle, where obviously the market rolled over big time, and we've just come perfectly to the 61.8% fib of that decline, and you know, whoever lost confidence in the market here, you know, the the smart money's selling up here, um, they're not selling down here. You know, once once these kind of moves happen, you know, they're waiting to get back to their prices again, and while it's been impressive for the market to hold 1250 you know this has not really been a you know hugely um you know you just it's a very kind of sluggish price action higher and it seems to me that even if even if the 61.8 isn't the kind of the actual top that we see maybe we get to 1290 maybe we even pip up to to 1300 again it seems to me like whoever was selling the market down up here is waiting for the opportunity to do so again to take us even lower so I think we're going to call it a day there covered all the markets um, didn't I sorry I didn't go massively in depth into what the the Bank of Japan is likely to do I think they are going to be on hold because it was in the last meeting that they updated us insofar as they're not necessarily going to be doing exactly the same amount of QE each month they're going to be targeting the yield curve and that 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 decision has actually been a large part of what's been affecting the bond market and driving uh, bond yields higher uh, across across the last couple of weeks um, so I don't expect them to double down on that um, maybe just update us on the the progress and you know the market will be looking for any little hint to suggest that they're tapering QE heavy signs of tapering QE from the BOG by the way would you know that would be yen positive and, and dollar yen negative but obviously that's that's only one side of the coin we've got the Fed hiking on the other side so um, bef you know while a Fed rate hike is imminent and potentially a steeper hiking of, of rates after that um, you know still you know this breakout in dolly yen still looks fairly positive brilliant okay thank you very much for attending good luck with trading this week it's jasper signing out